A scientist did a study that I think we're going to find very interesting. He took Japanese fish, put them inside of a fish tank, and then infected the water in there with BPA. BPA is something that kind of comes from plastic, and you've probably seen BPA before, like BPA free on some plastic water bottles or anything, right? He put a hyper concentrated amount of BPA in this, this tank with these fish for seven days. And then he replaced the water and put in extremely filtered water, clean water after that. So they were exposed to BPA, a really high level of BPA for seven days. What do you think happened to the fish? Not much. Nothing significant happened. And then the fish had babies. And this group of fish that were contaminated with BPA for seven days, they had 50% less babies than a control group. And then when they tested those fish, those babies that grew up, 50% of those were infertile. And the next generation after that, almost entirely infertile. They stopped the study around then, but they genuinely could have made this group of fish extinct with a seven day exposure to BPA. And they actually did, the same scientists did actually an extremely similar study, but they did it now with something called EE2, a chemical, literally the letters EE2. This is a chemical that comes from, you know, like women take birth control. So you've probably seen this before. Like it, it's, a, it's like a pill, a contraceptive that women take daily. Like a lot of women take it so that they can't get pregnant and for other health reasons. A lot of pe women take, it's called oral contraceptives and it's like, you know, hormonal birth control. And a lot of women take that every single day. And when they pee, like in the toilet, and it goes through the water system, you can't actually filter out for hormones like that. The scale of what we're talking about here is, is too big for us to actually comprehend at this point. But I'm just going to say this again. Women who take hormonal birth control which totally changes their, their hormones, which pretty much chemically castrates them and destroys their testosterone. That goes into the water system when they pee, every time they pee. And our water filtration systems don't actually take that out because it's a hormone, it, it's an extremely small molecule. And so this, the, the scientists did a very similar study from the, uh, the previous one. This time they used EET, the EE2, the thing that comes from oral contraceptives, but they put in a moderate level, a moderate level, which is actually less than what's been found in our water. And they put it in for seven days, then they cleaned out the water and then they just in, observed what would happen to the fish. It was about the same results. Almost entirely infertile in three generations. You know, 20% of us are infertile right now. We're probably like the first real generation of like, of, of what happened here. Mark my words, our children will be 50% in, infertile, which means either my children or your children will not be able to have children. And this seems, you know, quite distant and, and insignificant, but there's something closer to our hearts and it's testosterone. In 1940s, it was the first study on like men's testosterone, right? So before that, we didn't actually have like the testing or whatever it was. So 1940s is the first real blood test for testosterone. They had more than double our rates today. Easily over a thousand nanograms per deciliter. And of course there's other metrics to look for, free testosterone, SHBG, but just by a rough metric, they had about double. The average young man today, roughly 20 years old, guess what our numbers are? 400 and and nine to 558 nanograms. So about 500, that's what our, our numbers were. Our great grandfather's testosterone was above a thousand. Ours are about 500.